We're coming to you live from Oldham Beach. My shortcut tip for kayaking trips is to go with a guide. You just can't know what you don't know, and so you really need to have an expert along to help you be safe and also to avoid a lot of hassles. You don't want to be stuck out there. Cut already? Oh, that's fine. The riffraff doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. So these guys are part of our crew. They're getting ready to go fishing. And they'll just provide a little bit of um, background entertainment for you. My glasses are already fogging up. As I was saying, you definitely need a guide for safety, but also because if you don't know when the tide is good, just hang hey, on to that. Why? Well, no, just hang on. If you want to Duct tape is always <laughs> great to have on a kayaking trip to repair your tarp. Who knows poles. what else? Poles, boats. <laughs> boats. Um, you can wrap it around your finger. That's right. For, to avoid blisters. Yeah, right in here. Okay. So the guide will help you know when the currents are going with you or against you so you can do things the easy way. Um, they'll help you avoid a windstorm, know what time of day to go, all that stuff. So this is my friend Bean. We used to teach together <laughs> and she was just so generous, brought me along on my first kayaking trip, let me borrow all of her gear, even her kayak, her extra kayak. It's been almost 10 years now that we've been paddling together. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was this trip? Eight nights. Well, we came out to Gold River, took the logging road out to Tassis. Then we loaded all our gear onto a boat called Shorebird, the company Shorebird. Unfortunately, it was a little bit later in the day, so the boat ride was a little bit choppy. We got wet, so that's why when you uh, do boat rides out or kayak transportation. Hot out. tip. Yeah. Wear your rain gear, even if you think you don't need it, you will get drenched it was like a log ride getting yeah, it was super drenched and it's long and Ooh. bumpy and cold yeah. so you definitely want to be yeah. dry on yeah. those trips exactly the boat took us to island 44 in new shatlets so this is the area is new shatlets and the island's not technically called island 44 we just call it island yeah. 44 there are other island 44 44 is how many meters it is above sea level. That's correct. So on the chart, it says 44. So mm -hmm. if you know the area, New Shetlets, and you see an island with a number 44, that's where we were. It's called Wyash. And we stayed there for three nights, and we paddled around the area. Paddled over to Benson Point, where we stayed three nights as well, on a beautiful beach, big beach. We paddled in that area every day as well. And then yesterday we came out to this area here, called Oldham Beach, which is just off of Fair Point on the northwest tip of Nootka Island. So we're staying here two nights and then getting picked up around the corner at Tongue Point tomorrow morning by Shorebird, the company Shorebird. For our yeah. water taxi home. Yahoo! My first question, other than where are we, is how do you start planning a trip? Um, what happens from my point of view is I get an email, here's the trip plan, and I say, looks great, Bean, but I know that a lot of work goes into planning a trip, so could you please tell our audience, what do you do? What's, what's the background information about how we get to where we get to? First of all, I think uh, before you even plan a trip, you need to know that you need to take lessons. You, Just right? pull it down a little. The okay. mic's a little oh, close yeah. to you. Okay. Speak up Should just so we don't again? get reverb. No, don't okay. start again. Okay. This is all part of the routine. Okay, <laughs> so yes, before you plan a trip, uh, with with your group or whatever you all need to have lessons you need to know how to do an assisted rescue you mm. need to know how to do a solo rescue you need to do navigation you need to know basic navigation if there's somebody in your group that has a GPS I highly recommend that because especially in fog you'll need it and it just it's nice to know how fast you're going on the water because that's how you can tell currents where the currents are taking you and you know, if you're really going against a current and and it's really hard work, then you may choose to do something else. Abort the mission. Abort. Exactly. You might have to find another beach that you can exactly. camp at yeah. if you're going too slow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, usually on the west coast of Vancouver Island, there's not a lot of currents. So that's kind of the nice thing, you know, um, in comparison to the San Juans, which is a lot of currents. And the Gulf Islands. And the Gulf Islands. So it's... Um, it's a pleasure out here on the west coast of Vancouver. Island, Not to fight sure. the current. Exactly. But there are other things that you will come up against. Yes. So what, yes. what's out here that's different and more challenging okay. than being Definitely on the inside? Definitely more challenging seas uh, with swell. Swell, is, it takes some, some people a lot of time to get used to swell. 
I loved Swell. I thought yeah. it was so fun. You're just yeah. riding up, up and riding and down. down, and it's it's like an amusement park ride. But then with Swell comes surf. So mm. you need to know where to land your boat in surf because loaded boats and surfing do not go hand in hand. Mm. Surfing with a plastic boat is fine or an unloaded boat, that's fine. You know, you can just but guide with your paddle. Def yeah. Definitely, again, take lessons. But you do need to know how to brace because that is something that's going to save you if the surf, if these swells get larger and you're in an area that has uh, now wind, now you're getting wind on top of the swell and that's when you get into trouble. So when a big wave comes, you stick your paddle out to the side mm -hmm. and you don't overcorrect or you'll flip. Right. And you just push your paddle out to the side and it kind of like catches the wave and it balances you until it passes underneath Un you, right? Until the trough, that's right. Okay. So, and then make sure you're flicking up with your, your knee. Your so you gotta flick, your when your boat gets yeah. pushed, you gotta flick it up with your yeah. hip. Yeah, at the right time. Yeah. So, yeah, just practicing. Uh, you can practice in pools, you can practice in lakes, you can, you know, the more you get out of your boat in the water, the more comfortable you're going to be. Yeah. I'd say uh, even towards get after you know your rescues, get into some rolling practice. Even if you never, never achieve a roll, it's always good bracing and sculling and just getting, being able to move your boat wherever you want is really important out here on the ocean. Yeah. So, and that um, happened to me two days ago. Yeah. Bean said rock to the left and I avoided the rock, but I forgot to look at the water to see how powerful it was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't avoid the rock enough and a wave sucked me toward the rock. Yeah. And then I had to paddle like crazy because I don't want to have my boat hit the rock. So mm -hmm. I was paddling forward, paddling back, and I managed to get out from, away from the rocks, but then another wave pushed me right back into it, and yeah. my pride was injured. My <laughs> boat was fine, but- and you stayed um, calm. I did great. stay calm, yeah. but my heart was beating. Yeah. Um, I, for the rest of the day, I, I was humbled by the ocean, and yeah. I thought, I need to remember to give a wider berth to the rocks yeah in big water mm -hmm. because it's not like we were just putzing around in the tide pools and yeah, yeah sure you don't want to hit a rock on the bottom of your boat That's it'll scratch right. your boat but uh this was big water and so even though i thought i gave it enough room around mm -hmm. it wasn't because a big wave comes and it pushes you in yeah. and sucks you and you can paddle as hard as you can yeah so. and then you have rebounders and everything else as well yeah so just getting to know yeah and the experience of you being in the water too just gives your comfort level a yeah. little bit more too yeah so. yeah and some people are like more cavalier yeah. and less nervous but that doesn't always mean it's a good thing no. because you need to have a healthy respect for the ocean yeah. and just because you're not scared doesn't mean you're safe yeah so that's a lesson also and, for all those people who are daredevils yeah you have to be really careful the also the other thing when you're thinking about a, a planning a trip is who you're going with you you need to make sure everybody's on the same wavelength as far as rescues because when you're out here you are a team yes and uh, that means right from get-go helping with loading boats it, helping on the logging road taking other people's gear whatever helping we're all a team here we're all one and making sure that everybody's safety is number one find um, find an area you would like to do I would say your first trips should be either the Gulf Islands or the Broken Group is nice. And you can take a boat out of Euculet and Banff, Banfield to the Broken Group. I would suggest you do that and maybe stay on one of the islands like Willis or Dodd and then you can do little day trips around. That's a perfect beginner group. Uh, the, golf, the golf trips, same thing there. The only thing is, is um, the there currents. is more currents. So the Broken Group is really great for that. Now, um, you can kayak from Secret Beach over, but hey, why not take a water tax, taxi over as your first one? Uh, you get the sense of the area on the boat. It's, it's a nice way. So when you say water taxi, you get dropped off at a beach and then you just stay at one beach and do your day paddles from yep, there? exactly. That's a good idea. Or if you want to move, say you're staying out there for six nights, you do three nights at one beach and three nights at another beach, which isn't too far away, like you don't have to. Mm -hmm. But the experience of just packing, unpacking, setting up tent, all that will help you in a more a challenging trip, right? Yeah, so, yeah. But so 
getting to know the area. So how I do that is by reading books. Uh, John Comantis's books are fantastic, his newer ones. And he has a um, map book as well, which is great. It goes along with his, his actual books. We'll link to those below in the show notes. Oh, okay, that's great. <laughs> I like his because he gives on his newer books the waypoints. So the waypoints are nice if you're using GPS. So the waypoint is the latitude and longitude of where exactly you are on the planet. That's right. So lots of research. So how research, I do Google Maps as well. And I look at the beaches. I look to see what's in front of the beaches. Is there rocks, islets, which will protect the beach more? Of course, landing on a beach is usually better on the ends of the beach, not in the middle, because that's where more surf is. Mm. So you can pretty much go around uh, Vancouver Island, West Coast, without having to do surf. Mm. When we did the outside of Nootka Island, the exposed uh, big beautiful beaches, Third Beach, Kelvin, Beano Creek. Uh, we got in all of those, even Kelvin, which is pretty much totally exposed, there's areas, and if you do your reading, you can get in without too much surf. Then with the GPS, I usually do my little tracks. So I do a lot of Google map searching. I do, I look at the charts, uh, you know, there's a lot of thinking okay how many miles on the west coast on the outside I think our max has been 15 miles from Raft Cove down to uh, Grant Bay if you don't know the area try and find groups there's groups on Facebook there's like you know there's all kinds of Ska BC Pika on the mainland there you're in Nanaimo Paddlers not Nanaimo Paddlers if you're going on the east coast there's uh, BC Marine Trails so there's all kinds of really good clubs that you can join. There's lots of experienced people you can ask questions if you have okay. questions. The other thing is you've got to know the weather. The weather is essential and I mean you set a, a trip months in front so you're just watching the weather and I watch the weather and it can change like that. Um, so you can and out here on the west coast it is really different in certain areas and you know on your VHF you get the weather and it's for very large areas, so it's really it's really hard to gauge. You listen the to the VHF every night yeah, um, every for the next day. Yeah, on the radio. Yeah, and in the morning usually before okay. we go. Mm -hmm. So we always have like a little trip planned the night before of what we're doing for the next day. And again, in the morning, if we were to move, we'd have like a quick little group to decide on what we're doing. So if the weather was, if it was really foggy and we didn't want to go, if we were doing something a little bit more warrior-like, we would decide whether we were going or not. Sometimes in the fog, it's the best time to go because the winds are down. Mm -hmm. So as long as your GPS guides you. Exactly. Around the rocks. Yeah, exactly. And so weather is really important as mm -hmm. well. I'm basically motivated to get out in nature. And um, the thing that just got me so hooked on kayaking right away is that I'm not carrying all my gear on my back. Mm -hmm. So totally. car camping, you got generators and crying kids and barking dogs and people's ah. music. And, and you know, you wanna get out in nature, but with car camping, your tent is not soundproof. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's sometimes not relaxing because mm -hmm. there's so much noise. You really wanna get out into nature where you can be alone mm -hmm. and the only way I knew how to do that before kayaking was hiking mm -hmm. and that's amazing but you have to carry everything you bring on your back and it's hard it's so hard so kayaking is like this amazing gem of a sport because it's like car camping you can stuff so much stuff into oh, those boats amazing. you can bring plenty of water food fresh food fresh vegetables yeah. fruit anything you want and within reason and um, you can really have like a luxurious time out in nature i mean we're so remote here and it's cheap <laughs> yes it's i mean the boats are expensive mm -hmm. but um you can buy used boats on facebook or yeah. different places right. and once you have it that boat will last 20 years yeah and uh you don't some places charge camping fees but they're usually not a lot of yeah. money and it's a couple hundred bucks for the ferry yeah. and the water taxi yeah. And you buy your food and once you have your gear you have it yeah, so that's right. you can get a lot of gear secondhand a lot of people get into this totally. and then they find that with their schedules they just can't do it as much as they want mm -hmm. and so they sell their whole kit yes. of kayaking and all their gear yeah. 
amazing. So yeah, once you get your stuff, then um, then you're set, and it's just a matter of finding a group mm -hmm. who that you feel happy to travel yeah. with, and that you guys are all on the same page yes. as far as how rigorous you want your trip to be. Our trips now are pretty relaxing. Mm -hmm. We we have a lot of beach time. We all read mm -hmm. books. We play cards. We play you know games. beach comb, play games, just hang out. But some groups, when they go on a paddling trip, they want to be on the water the whole time. So you need to find out like, mm -hmm. if everyone wants the same thing. That's things. a happy balance. Yeah, like you said, weather is really the unknown. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be flexible and just go with it. Exactly. Make sure that you have enough clothes that you can stay dry. And because um, if you get wet and it does, the sun doesn't come out, you're wet yeah. for the rest of the trip. That's and that can fun. be pretty miserable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, packing the right stuff. You get so much out of these trips. Yeah, it's definitely so. something to, to try. If you ever get the opportunity yeah. and you haven't done it, yeah. definitely do it. Paddling is a healing sport because mm. of the motion. It's great for knees and hips and abs and you know, your back low, yeah. with lower back issues. The way that it's structured and your body is moving inside the boat, it's a heal and with the sun and the salt mm -hmm. I think it's all very therapeutic very therapeutic it's also so. good for your mind um, not being able to bring any digital like I have yes. my phone but I don't have any cell service here yeah. and so I call it a digital detox when yeah. I'm on these trips and the totally. first couple days I'm a little jittery can't check my <laughs> usual apps and stuff but once you get into it you get this calm and the, mm. the listening of the waves hearing that surf um, <laughs> all day long and breathing in the air it's it's just very healing for your mind and your yeah. body so totally. wonderful opportunity and then awesome. there's the bonuses of seeing the sea otters yeah and so then we saw lots of seals we always are on the lookout for whales you've yes. seen way more whales than yeah. I have I don't know a if lot they're of less common actually here there's uh, usually a humpback around here somewhere okay. so we might see it okay. today and we've seen sea lions and of course, along the shore, all the starfish and sea urchins yeah. and yeah, all the different it's, rock it's formations. It's uh, Life is incredible. A lot of these beaches have hiking trails in there too. So mm -hmm. that's a fun afternoon activity. Yeah. After you go for your morning paddle, you can go for an afternoon hike. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Get your legs stretched out. Yes. Yeah. Do a and yoga on the beach. Speak, I was just going <laughs> to say, speaking of stretching, we always are stretching around the campfire at night. And sit around the fire and stretch and talk about the day. It's a great and, way. And the other thing is I'm very grateful to have a husband that kayaks as well. So I've been yes. very fortunate all these years. And you guys make a great team. And Bean's got a tiny little boat that she can maneuver in and roll. <laughs> and Stu's got this huge boat. We call it the pig. The and he boat. can take <laughs> yeah, it, can, can fit it a lot of stuff. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this um, this little kayaking presentation. Thank yeah. you so much Thank for you. giving us your expertise. I'm sure we could go on and on and on, but I think this gives a good taste of yeah, what we've taste. done. Yeah, right okay. On.